All right. Hi. Uh, I haven't had anybody join yet, but I'm going to go ahead and um, get started here. Uh, it's probably be relatively quick today, but I'll say a few things about the assignment nine. Um, some quick reminders. Uh, I've mentioned this in the last two or three announcements, but uh, this is our final week um, and it is over by Thursday. So I really can't, you know, uh, look at anything that's submitted uh, or, or that, that you don't get turned in by the end of the day on Thursday. And that even includes, you know, um, like uh, I, I might be grading stuff late night on Thursday. So you shouldn't rely on me not grading, me grading stuff the next morning. So, you know, you really should get the last assignment in before uh, midnight on Thursday. Definitely get your second test in. I'm going to be trying to grade those um, as they're coming in so that I can get everything uh, submitted by the due date on Friday. So. Um, anyway, so keep that in mind. I encourage everybody to, you know, make your own deadlines a little bit sooner, you know, so uh, it would be best if you could get the assignment nine done today and the assignment 10 uh, done Wednesday, leave yourself, you know, Thursday at a minimum to do things. So, all right, so let's look at assignment nine here. Um, and as usual, I'll post this video after the fact. Um, So let me go ahead and do the usual things. Just always a good double check for me to make sure everything looks like it's uh, still correctly up and working here. So we'll accept the assignment um, in order to get a, a repository created. And uh, we'll follow our steps here. Um, so you know, clone the repository. Uh, do the configuration and confirm everything's building and running and that our um, IntelliSense is working and code formatting is working and those kinds of things. So let me go ahead and, and copy the URL. Um, did I start my dev box? Yes, I did start my dev box. Uh, oh, got to close off. Our last assignment eight here. So we can clone our assignment nine. And then we'll open up the folder um, and we'll go ahead and do our configuration. So we get our git ignore, or so we get our CLang format in our .vs code. Um, and then I'll go ahead and try building, make sure everything's building cleanly. So control shift one to make clean, control shift two to do a make all, and control shift, um, and then control shift three to run our tests. Once everything's built, this has uh, got quite a bit to build there, so do make certain everything's completely built before you try running the tests. Um, yeah, so that all looks good. Um, you know, our code formatting should be working. I type in some code, hit return. Um, it is indenting it, um, and IntelliSense seems to be parsing things and finding potential syntax errors and other kinds of problems. All right, and then um, go ahead and create my issue number one to get started with as usual here. So for this one, we're going to be working with binary trees. Uh, you're going to be implementing some member methods of the binary tree. Um, basically, every all the five tasks are implementing some member methods. Uh, we start with some simpler ones, and then we're going to implement implement uh, three and four are actually some private member methods that we're going to use to implement the remove uh, member methods to, to be able to remove items from a binary tree. So, so let's create our task one. So um, So task one, bring back up the description here again. 
um, is to implement the insert member method. So um, basically, you know, we're building a, a binary tree. So, so let, let's go ahead and look at kind of the structure of stuff here. Um, so, um, so if you look at the, um, header file for our binary tree here. Um, we are still using, uh, so a couple of things here, we're, we're using a templatized class here. We're kind of in sort of an anticipation of dictionaries that we're uh, focusing more in on unit 10. Uh, instead of just uh, keeping a collection of values, we're actually keeping a collection of key value pairs in our tree, right? Uh, and this, this will actually make a little bit more sense uh, if you haven't already looked at the material about dictionaries and, and you know, uh, key value pair mappings kind of things. So, but, uh, but we kind of jump to it here. So the, the basic idea is that, um, um, For insert, we're always going to be keeping things uh, um, uh, in the tree um, indexed by the key. Okay, so when you insert, you give both a key and a value, and it's going to insert that key value pair into the tree um, uh, indexed on the key, or so that we can look up things on the key. Um, so we're so find, then you'll, we'll use a key, and remove, we'll use a key um, to, to find the item and return the value associated with the key in our binary tree or to remove the key value pair from the tree uh, from the remove pair. So um, um, okay, sorry about that. Uh, I think I lost my network connection there. So let me let me just check my audio and stuff here. All right, uh, hopefully we won't I won't lose my network again there. So um, as I was saying here, so um, we're going to be adding in, or we're actually, you're actually going to be adding in the member methods to the L binary tree. We don't have a corresponding array base, although you could implement, uh, you know, binary trees using uh, like fixed size arrays. Uh, but but we are using uh, all your stuff is going to go in the L binary tree. So in particular for task one, um, we need to actually uncomment the virtual. Um, uh, the abstract method here from the uh, binary tree um, uh, um, parent class, the, the base class. Um, and, um, uh, oops, sorry. And uh, we want to. Da, da, da. Go ahead and declare it. Um, um, although for our actual implement, implementation in L binary tree, it's no longer a virtual, pure virtual function. Um, so, you know, again, insert the, this is a signature. It takes a key and a value pair as input, takes a constant reference to a key and a value, right? In our templatized class here. Uh, it doesn't return the result. It just inserts that key value pair. So um, if you, Watch the materials for unit nine here. Uh, we're basically using like linked lists. Uh, so we call this L binary tree again, but uh, of course it's not just a list. It's a, we're gonna link it as a tree. So basically we're using a, these binary tree nodes. Um, and the only thing that we keep um, a, a private member variable of is the root of the tree, which should be initialized to null initially to, to indicate that the, the tree is empty when, when um, the, the size of the tree is zero or there's no key value pairs in the tree, right? So, you know, you can look at the binary tree node here. So, you know, as we saw in kind of our materials for this week, a binary tree node, um, um, I'll talk about these. It's, it's actually got accessor methods that you're going to be using this time instead of directly um, setting the the the, um, the pointers and things. But it, it basically, the, the member variables of a binary tree node are, it keeps the key and the value in that node. And then we have, uh, instead of a single next pointer, we have a left and a right pointer so that we can form a tree basically, right? So the left points to the left subtree, the, the left child subtree um, from the current node and the right points to the right subtree, right? And the thing about a binary search tree is that all the, the keys to in the left subtrial of any particular node, 
uh, all those keys have to be less than the key of this node, right? Uh, and then all the keys in the right subtree uh, should be greater than this uh, than, than the key in this node, right? As long as you maintain that property, you know, everything less than is over on the left of the tree and everything greater is on the right, uh, we'll be able to search the binary tree in a logarithmic time. It basically kind of it works the same way as like the binary search that we talked about. Um, um, so, so by uh, doing this, as, as long as the tree is relatively balanced, like I talked about, um, every time we figure out whether the key we're looking for is, should be the left or the right, we essentially are able to eliminate about half of the values. So that would give us uh, O log, uh, logarithmic performance or O log in performance um, to find things if the tree is relatively balanced. Okay. So, um, anyway, so back to what we need to do for the insert then. Um, Um, oh yeah, so I already gave, kind of gave you the signature also in the assignment description. Okay, so for most of these methods, like we sh showed in the, um, um, the, the lecture videos uh, for this unit, uh, for trees, we're always going to have like a public method, uh, and we're going to be implementing. You're going to be implementing all of these member methods as recursive uh, implementation, recursive function. Okay, so uh, the, the trees really lend themselves to a recursive implementations of things of, of, of you know inserting key key value pairs in and removing them and finding them things like that right so the public method is really just a uh, uh, an api uh, and and it the the real work is going to be done in the private recursive method so um the way that we're going to do the recursion is you know we have to give the key value pair but we have to to also uh, give a node for all these recursive functions right and and so the the, the public thing we'll call the recursive version with the root node initially. And then these will recursively go to the left or the right of the current node, depending on the comparison with the key, right? if that makes sense. So uh, so we need both that insert that I already gave you, um, and we just copy paste this. So the, the, um, uh, the private recursive version uh, has a slightly different function as uh, signature, and it returns a result. So it's not a void here because we're, uh, I'll discuss why we need to do that here. Um, we, we talked about that in the lecture videos uh, for this uh, week as well. So, um, but anyway, that means, uh, so make certain that, that you do make these private member functions uh, private. So, um, all right, so the recursive, um, member function insert uh, needs to be a private member function here. So, um, so uh, I kind of forgot, I, I, I did kind of skip a little bit here what I would normally do. So, uh, you know, so normally, you know, I encourage you to um, uncomment the test. So uh, we've got a few test cases uncommented uh, initially, um, but um, uh, we'll go ahead and uncomment the test one cases. So since I put in the two function signatures, um, um, if I try and compile this, um, oh, there, there's more than one um, test case for task one. So like the first one is inserting integer keys with an integer value. The next one is testing with string keys and double values. And there might be um, um, some more kinds of things here. So. Um, so since I already added in the um, uh, the signatures for the insert and the private insert, um, um, it should compile. Go and do a clean and a compile here. Um, oh, so I had a compile error there. Oh, um, um, and, and you know, as you should usually expect, you know, we added in the method. The, uh, the function signatures for our insert here that we're trying to implement for task one, uh, but we haven't actually um, compiled it. Um, and we haven't actually made implementations for those. Uh, we expect, uh, it doesn't look like the normal link error there. Let me try a clean build again. Uh, 
Um, so that's what you should get. I don't, I don't know what I did there before, but it, it should complain about um, 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 and, you know, a little bit, a little bit tough to to see the error message here so big, but um, but uh, under the, we're getting you know the what we would expect undefined references to um, the function that we're trying to call from our tests uh, here to begin with. So um, uh, our insert function here, right? All right, so let's go ahead and put in a stop implementation so we can at least get it compiling and running. Um, so, so you need two stub implementations, uh, one for the, the public insert and one for the private, uh, but you should be able to get it compiling in the test run by just putting in your first stub uh, for insert here, okay? Um, so I kind of want, you know, I encourage you to always try to keep these in the same order that they're declared. So I want the insert to kind of happen after the String here. Um, so we'll find our string function. There it is. Um, oh, um, Oh, right. I uh, need to open up the source file, actually. So we want to actually add these to the Elbaron tree. .cpp. That's where we want to find our string function. Um, and we'll put our insert here. Adding in our function documentation. So in this case, this is a void function. Um, um, a stub, we don't have to do anything. So. So here we're um, inserting a new key value pair into the binary search tree. So this is the public um, API method to uh, invoke the insertion of a new value into the collection. The uh, real work of inserting, of, of creating a new node and inserting it into the tree is done by the private insert right. And we've got two parameters of the, the key of the key value pair being inserted into this tree collection. And then the value. All right, so that's, you know, adequate for um, documentation here for our insert method. Um, so let's see if, um, oh, um, yeah, I didn't do everything. So this is a member function of our um, L binary tree class. So since I'm copying this from an existing one, I do have to remember to make it a member function of L binary tree. Um, and um, it is a template function as well, template member function. So we have to have that template boilerplate um, above here. All right, so I think that's good. So let's try uh, seeing if, if things build cleanly with that. Um, 
So uh, did I um, just type that? And we are including the header file here. Oh, right. And I'm, I'm, Need to uh, remind myself of this. So uh, it's, it's not an L binary tree, it's an L binary tree key value class. So we have to have that in there as well. All right. There we go. So that should hopefully allow us to compile it. And we should be able to run our test then. Um, so now we're finally running them, um, but yeah, we're failing. So after we insert our first key value pair, we're expecting the tree to be of size one. So to actually implement this, um, um, you do have to increment the size. So, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, um, this stuff is probably uh, all described in here, kind of what you need to do. Um, so, you could increment the size in uh, the, um, um, the, the, the the public method, uh, or you could uh, implement it somewhere down in the private method. And then, so I'm going to get a, I'm not going to give you the full implementation of this, but um, um, but I I did also want to show you know creating the stub function for the um, uh, the private um, version of the insert as well, right? So you know the the it has the same name, but has a slightly different signature. So it's, this is another example of overloading a function name here. So we'll put our private version um, like we did in our declarations after the private string implementation here. So there are some examples of some private methods uh, that you might want to look at, like the string, the clear uh, here that were already implemented for you. So here's the, the private clear. Um, in uh, the private string before it here. Um, so here, um, this is the private uh, real implementation real recursive implementation of the insert um, um, of new key value pairs into the tree, right? Um, so, you know, so this takes uh, an additional parameter, um, it takes a node on um, this input, and returns one of these nodes as, as the result here, right? So the signature looks uh, similar, but um, um, we take some node as input um, and we're going to return a pointer to a binary tree node um, as a result, right? Turn a pointer to a binary tree node as a result, and we take a pointer to a binary tree node as input. All right. Um, so, so this does have to return, um, you know, like a, a binary tree node pointer here. So, if we want to stub this out, we do have to specify some kind of binary tree node pointer. So, I just return the node that I'm given originally. Um, so, you know, as is described um, in the assignment here, you know, so somewhere in here uh, or in the public method, we do have to uh, increase the size. So we can maybe try and add that in or to get uh, the first test to pass here. Um,
um, kind of like we had to do before. It uh, size is defined in the base the, the the base class or the parent class. So you have to use, either use this or use the binary tree colon colon um, before the size in order for the compiler to know what you want there. All right. Um, and then kind of last thing I will show you though. So so there are some examples of um, of um, the, the public methods calling the private methods. So for example, um, like we can look at the string here. Um, um, so when you call string, it doesn't, the, the, the public method doesn't take any parameters as input. Uh, but then we call rec the, the recursive version that takes a uh, node a pointer. Uh, and, and we start it off at the root of the node. So that's kind of how string works, the, the public version of string works. Um, or the public version of clear does a similar thing. So the, the, it just calls the private version of clear, which it expects a pointer. And then this recursively um, follows the tree, clearing it out and deleting stuff, all right? So, um, for our inserts, you basically have to do something similar. Um, so really all you have to do, except for maybe the increasing the size by one, if you want to do it here, um, is just call the uh, private version of the insert. Um, you know, it's a void function, so it doesn't return anything, um, but it takes in the key and the value that you're given, but it also, we're going to start at the root of the node. So, so we're going to be, Basically, the way insert works is you start at the root of the node um, and uh, you search recursively down until you find uh, the location in the tree where you need to create a new uh, node and um, um, and uh, and attach it to either a left or a right uh, branch of the tree. There. All right. So if we do that, that should compile and run. Still, right, but we're getting uh, pretty close to where we can uh, implement some things. All right. So uh, since I in incremented the size, uh, now the first thing that's failing is when we try and look at the actual contents of the list. You know, so, so we've got the size being set to one, but um, we're not um, actually getting that a new node created and added to the uh, tree there. All right. So um, 